Uh, well, here now to weigh in is a Silicon Valley pioneer, CEO and founder, who not only built his startups from the ground up, but he's navigated both public and private markets as a leading figure in technology. The co-founder, Sun Microsystems, Scott McNeely, is live in a Fox Business exclusive. Scott, it's great to have you here. Great to be here. Thanks. I want to get your take on Elon Musk. Look, he's 47. You were 27 when you founded Sun Microsystems. What do you make of these moves that he's been making and the way he's been on Twitter and, and he had secured funding and then he didn't have secured funding? What does that say to you about what's happening there? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not in the inside. I'm not on the board. And, you know, my perspective is that it's uh, very difficult to grow a company that large, make uh, that get, gather that much capital into the company. He's got a lot of shareholders there who've got a lot of uh, money invested in this company. He's also got a lot of money that he's been getting from the government. So he has, he's, he's more like a government company in the sense that uh, the subsidies have been absolutely key to a lot of the growth in that company. Some people call that crony statism. Uh, I, if you can get it from the government, take it. Uh, and then being a public company puts you, you know, at um, everybody feels like they can take a shot at you when you're a public company. It's really nice to be private. I've been private and I've been public, and let me tell you, being private is way nicer. Uh, he's got the other issue, though. Uh, the investors want liquidity. Well, I mean, and he's got he's got to worry about the potential shareholder lawsuits, which were already starting to be filed when that tweet came out on that Tuesday that he was going to take the company private at 420 a share uh, you know so that's one issue for him but also what about the fact that this company has done very well he's done very well being a publicly traded company headaches aside I, you know I, I think the ultimate long-term measure of a company's doing well is cash flow and right now they aren't making money and they are not a positive cash flow generator mm -hmm. so the, the jury is still out the jury's not out on Apple. Steve Jobs, you know, I consider to be the greatest entrepreneur I've ever seen in my lifetime. That's a very cash flow positive organization. They've got billions of dollars, and they're not out worrying about whether they have to go private or public uh, from, a, from a cost of capital perspective. They're spewing cash. That's doing well. We have yet to see that out of Tesla yet. And there's some big competitors coming in, uh, whether it be Uber hooking up with a, a Japanese car company, as we heard earlier today, or uh, Ford Motor Company buying Autonomics and a bunch of other companies to get into uh, the cloud services and uh, ultimately the uh, self-driving uh, world. You know, there's a lot of big players that are going to be uh, uh, going after uh, Tesla. Yeah. What do you make of Gene Munster's uh, belief in his case that Apple should be pursuing a, t a stake in Tesla? Apple's got lots of cash. Tesla does not. But they both are in kind of the component device AI field, if you will. What would you think of that kind of tie up? You know, again, it, uh, I should have bought Apple back when we had a chance at Sun, but <laughs> yeah. I probably would have messed it up badly. And you never know if uh, I, I just can't imagine uh, uh, Elon Musk coming to a staff meeting and not being the boss. So, uh, you know, mm. that's that's always there's always collision okay. risk when you put two companies like that together. OK, let me, let me ask you about something else. Warren Buffett, Jamie Dimon, they're getting behind this notion that companies shouldn't be doing quarterly reporting anymore. They should go to a six month model that it's it's tough for companies to innovate on this quarterly reporting. You've already said you kind of like being private more than you like being public. Do you agree that every six months would be better for a company to report versus every quarter? Well, I apologize. I named my first son Maverick, and I would take a much, much more aggressive approach to that and that uh, we shouldn't have to do uh, SEC reporting. What we should have to do is publish all of the statistics about our business on our website, what, what our bank accounts are, what assets we have, a picture of them, when we bought them, where they're being used. We should have to uh, say what our receivables are, what our payables are, and if we have receivables over 90 days, we should identify exactly who's not paying us. And we should uh, show them short and long-term contracts that are, are significant. And that data is all available, and anybody can be an analyst. I shouldn't have to uh, hire an accountant to come up with an EPS number. Let the analysts do that. Mm -hmm. And then let people trade their stock, not on Wall Street, but on my website. 
and I can sell new and used right. shares on my website. We don't need really to do quick. commissions. We don't need the banks. You so, brought this up. I got to yeah, ask you this. No, blockchain. You're, very, you're a huge believer in blockchain. Uh, you say that this is the future of technology. Uh, why do you say that? I just, I just think this whole concept of uh, online uh, persistent and, and trusted ledgers out there is, is, a, is a wonderful way to go with transparency. And you're going to see very large uh, data centers in, involved in mining and, and uh, managing these, these blockchain transactions. I know I'm working with one called GMG Core, which is out there building a data center specifically and boards, uh, mining boards specifically for this activity. And they actually can... Uh, move the the investment, uh, the computing investment towards currencies that are doing well, that have a hash environment that allows them to get access to uh, a, a successful mining of those cores. There's going to be a very, very large business in making this happen. And mm -hmm. it's going to redo a lot of industries where we have private ledgers where you have to pay to get access to right. uh, public ledgers. It's a big deal. It is. No, it's, we've been talking about it a lot. A lot of people getting into the business as well, but you're there. Scott McNeely, it was a pleasure, sir. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you.